गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई होप आई गुड मॉर्निंग ओके गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग या सो गुड टू सी ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू आर वीक टेन ऑफ आर क्लास इट्स गुड टू हैव ऑल ऑफ यू हियर वेलकम टू आर ई लर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एज वेल थैंक यू फॉर ensuring that you're doing um your your work and your course through the week we continue to encourage you to stay uh abreast with what is uh, what we're doing uh, i hope all of y'all are well here on the uh, online platform uh learning through each week and uh, using these skills that we've been learning through the past week i hope so yeah maybe some responses of uh, especially these skills it's a very practical way of learning how to talk to others to build conversations and to enhance uh, your listening and your speaking so i hope that it's being used okay so a quick recap anybody would like to take us through what we uh, did last week you could put it on the chat if uh, you're unable to unmute and speak as to what did we cover last week am i audible or is it that no one's saying anything Yes, ma'am. You are. Okay. Okay. We yes, learned about the micro skill, the second mm -hmm. micro skill that is responding. Okay. So we learned about uh, how can we respond to others, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to their uh, responses, like uh, feeling words. We learned about mm -hmm. reflecting our feeling through listening accurately, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Play, paying clear attention to mm -hmm. what they are uh, communicating and forming that mm -hmm. and uh, not giving solutions but uh, through conversation we can motivate them to find solutions that's what mm -hmm. i understood okay. thank you good good very good yes we spoke about responding <clears throat> which serves as um, you know as as a mirror for the person who's speaking we looked at a couple of different kinds of responding responding with feelings responding with content responding with meaning and summative uh, responses so we looked at that we did a couple of uh, uh i think it's last week that we did yeah we did some role plays you all did try and do some on your own so that's that's good okay so today we're going to be looking at the at another micro skill which is something that becomes very very easy for all of us especially when we are trying to to have a conversation with somebody can anybody figure out what it is that's the first thing that we do what would it be some guesses so till i put up my screen you can keep thinking okay you don't have a chance anymore so uh, it's not it okay so what is that questions yes samuel absolutely so we just love to ask questions don't we so this is a class that we're all just going to ease up because you know you 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 have we're learning about how to question now you're going to be asking oh, oh is there even in counseling do you have to learn about questions don't questions come easily okay so there is even asking questions also uh, is a kind of a skill and uh, we will be learning about about this very um this very part of it okay so i thought what we could probably do is initially sorry i'm just going to stop sharing this and i will share a bit later um 
and uh, maybe I think we can start before we really look at what questioning is. Let's look at uh, 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 let's look at um, case example and look at how we question wrongly. You know, so this is a good time to just mess up and uh, figure out what is a wrong way to ask questions. Okay, so let me. I, I just wanted to put up that. Uh, uh, let me put up that uh, example and let's let me share this okay all right so here's the here's the the condition here okay there is a a, a young 19 year old student by name mary and uh, she comes to you worried because she's not getting on with other students in her class okay so this is the um this is the scene i'd like somebody to be mary Okay, I'll be I'll be the counselor, and I want the rest of you to really note uh, the kind of questions that's being asked. Okay, and so what I'd like y'all to do is probably pick up some question that you think is absolutely not necessary, and tell me why you think it's not necessary. Okay, so I hope I'm clear. So I'd like one of you to become Mary. All right, you're 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 the you're the 19 year old student who comes very worried because uh, you're not getting on with other students in your class. Okay, so that's that's what that's the place you are in, and uh, I'm here as the counselor, and I want all the rest of you, other than Mary or even Mary can, uh, to to write down the questions and tell me what's wrong with these questions or what's right with these questions. Okay, are we on? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, who's my Mary? Someone would like to be Mary? Or can a volunteer be John? <laughs> yes, Samuel, you can be John. <laughs> All right, yes. Please go ahead and be John. <laughs> Thank you, <much. laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what we're going to do is the rest of you, please keep a note of the questions. And uh, this is going to be, you're, you're really going to analyze my poor skill of questioning and uh, going to tell me what is wrong in that. And, and you will pick this up only when you hear it, right? Sometimes when you are um, actually saying it, you may not really understand. So that's why I thought we'd do it like a role play. Okay. All right, uh, John. Yes, yes, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Hi, John. I'm I'm Jean. Uh, why are you here today? Um, my mom sent me to you, Pastor, um, because she thinks I don't have any friends. So she thinks she thinks you'll be able to help me make friends um, in my class. Okay, your mom sent me to you. Okay, so um, your mom feels there's something wrong. You're, you're, what are your friends like? I don't have any friends. So I told mom that uh, I'm not. So we changed schools and um, in the new school, I'm, I don't have much friends. Uh, uh -huh. So I shared this with mom and uh, mom said uh, that I should. She she suggested a few things I tried um, and okay. still didn't work. So I kept I mm. told her that I'm not making much friends. So uh, mm. she's going to talk to Pastor, uh, and she might be able to help me. Okay, so your mom is worried that you don't have friends. Um, you aren't I, worried. You um, aren't worried. I I I yeah I'm I'm. I'm yeah, um, I'm worried too, uh, but I don't know how to say it. Miss, I I don't feel like I fit in. Okay, why don't you fit in? Um, because um, I'm a little. I think I'm I'm a little shy to s approach anyone, and they already seem to have their own friend circle. So I just feel, yeah. That I can't mm. just go and join any group. Why are you such a loner, John? 
I wasn't a loner before. I I love friends. Um, I miss my friends from my previous school. Mm-hmm. Uh, never be just here. Um, I haven't made friends. I, I I end up being alone all the time, and just uh, I end up talking to mom about it a lot. Mm. So you'd like to be alone at uh, home uh, at school, but you'd like to talk to mom at at home. Uh, I don't like to be alone at school. Uh, oh, when, you don't uh, like to be. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. like to be mm. Mm. So how many people are there in your class? Around uh, 42. 40 to mm-hmm. 42, I think. Mm-hmm. How many girls, how many boys? I, I don't know. But maybe around... I think there, there are more boys, I think, than girls. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you don't get along with the girls and the boys? Uh, I, not that I don't get along, but it's just... Uh, it, uh, it's, I, I, yeah, uh, they, everybody seems to be busy with their own world and it just, uh, I just end up having lunch by myself. Mm-hmm. You like having lunch by yourself? I don't like having lunch by myself. You don't like having... Okay, then who do you like to have lunch with? Someone, I think. It's so weird eating all alone. Mm. Mm. So how can I help you? I, <laughs> I don't know, Pastor. <laughs> if I were you, I would say I don't want any help. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So I think I've got a couple of questions that I said. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. Sam, tell me, what did, uh, tell me your experience. Um, I, I did, it didn't feel helpful at all. It did, It felt more like an interrogation. Almost it felt like it was my fault. Okay. And uh, I felt interrogated. Uh, I felt confused uh, at times. Mm. I mm-hmm. felt. Uh, even some like were really like yeah it it yeah it didn't feel like you were trying to understand me it just felt like uh, you're trying to find a fault at in me okay especially the question that on how many boys how many girls um, was it a needed like, question no I yeah that I I it didn't feel like it was a necessary mm. question. there were a lot of <laughs> unnecessary questions but unnecessary <laughs> questions okay okay good so we we heard it from John's mouth okay so let, let's hear from the rest of you yes Shay go ahead yeah yeah thank you pastor um so you basically kind of showed us some wrong questions not to ask and I just kind of noted some like for instance when you, when you asked John um why are you such a loner that, mm-hmm. that 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 was a negative question. Um, mm-hmm. uh, do you like to be alone at school? I mean, you already know his issue, so it's like mm. the question is um, amplifying the the problem that he's coming for you for help with. Then mm-hmm. um, you asked um, if why he was not getting along, whether he was not getting a, he doesn't get along with um, his schoolmates basically I think maybe the question should have been the other way around that do people get along with you maybe that would have been better and then mm-hmm. you abruptly asked John how can I help um, mm-hmm. that was kind of in a way like um, it looks like he's like a case and not mm-hmm. some not not necessarily a person it's like um mm-hmm. Just another problem coming to your door, um, coming to you instead of mm. treating the person, per- treating him as a person who needs um, help. But yeah, so mm. those were the negative questions I was able to identify. What questions not to ask, basically? Mm. Yeah, mm. wonderful, great observations. Wonderful. That's that's right. Uh, I think that Christopher has said the very first question in your face question: Why are you here? Yeah, yeah. Why are you here today? Yeah, uh, so that's good. Uh, you're not worried. Uh, okay, are you not? So I think I think one of the questions was, uh, your mom seems worried, so you aren't worried. Yeah, so that's again a closed question. Okay, Rose says very unempathetic. Uh, the counselee reacts as defensive instead. Absolutely. Okay, uh, easy to get along now with other students than the counselor. <laughs> Absolutely, I think. Uh, 
uh, John here would say definitely the students are better. <laughs> okay. Um, we are all your friends. Oh, Sam, they all felt for you, Sam. They, they just figured how bad a counselor I was. Okay. Uh, Chai says, only questions, not understanding. Good. I think that's an excellent observation. Through the entire uh, two, three minutes, there was only questions. There was no form of responding that came about. That's an excellent observation. Avina said, uh, so how can I help you? That was that was a discouraging question. Okay, I think just like what Shay said. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else has noticed something that is? Um, were there any unnecessary questions in that in that entire list? That really didn't. It's like questions of fluff, you know, just to just to put some air in the entire time spent. Did you all feel that? Anybody? Uh, how many classmates was irrelevant? Yes, asking how many. Uh, what does it have to do with with his issue here? Okay, excellent. That's that's a that's a good note. The last question: How can I help you? Okay, yeah. So that was something that uh, that didn't. And and uh, actually, the question of how can I help you is not actually a bad question, but with the flow of how the initial. Um, uh, three, four minutes went, that became a terrible question to ask. You know, it was almost like, you know, I can't find a problem here. What is what is wrong with you kind of a thing. But the question of, you know, how would you like or what are you looking for help from me is actually a, a, a solution focused question, which is a good question, provided that it has a backing of good responses to this. Okay. Uh, someone else has written something. Beth says, I felt one useful thing that did come out was that the counselor found out that he did, in fact, have friends in his previous place. I feel this would be actually useful info for a counselor to work with. Yeah, that's provided John stays with uh, the counselor, Beth. Okay, good. All right. So so you, you've you kind of figured out, um, uh, you know, how it can seem uh, sometimes of how our counsel, uh, how our techniques of what we say could actually be such a put off for people. So even if there are questions. So one thing I think is pretty clear that if you just keep questioning over and over and over and over again, um, the person does not feel heard. Okay. And that's why the previous skill that we learned on responding becomes so very important and crucial in in an interview process or in an exploration process. Okay, so let's go to um, go. I'm just going to get to the beginning of of this. Okay, so we are at questioning skills, and let's look at um, what is the purpose of of uh, questioning skills. So we need to. Uh, this is, like I said, this is a very important microscope, uh, micro skill, and uh, uh, questioning is what guides a conversation. Okay, and uh, good questions it brings about the richness of the counselee stories. Okay, and that's what's um, what you're doing. But it's it's just not gathering data or gathering information, but rather it is um, helping to see the situation, helping to see um, what where they are at, um, what kind of meaning and thoughts that go about in the counselee's mind. Okay, and we're going to be looking at different kinds of uh, questions which will, which will make it even more um, clearer to you. So this is usually uh, useful in the initial information gathering stage, okay? But like I said, it is also a skill that is used through the entire counseling process, even at the places where you're personalizing uh, stages of action. All of that uh, is where uh, questioning skills also becomes important. Uh, there's someone... Yes, Kennedy, you have a question? Kennedy? Okay, I think that was by mistake, probably. Okay, so let's move to what does questioning do? When um, what is the purpose of what? What does it really help in? Now, questions during a counseling session helps to open up those new areas of uh, discussion. 
okay and what does it also do it also assists to pinpoint an issue it also assists to clarify information that can seem uh, ambiguous to the counselor so questions that often invite uh, the counselee to think or recall information is what really aids in in um, the counselee's journey of self exploration. Okay, so um, and that's why it's important for a counsellor to be knowledgeable about the different types of techniques or questioning techniques and also how appropriately they need to be used. Okay, so here's an example of uh, how you clarify. So the counselor says, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Would you please repeat that? Okay. Or what do you think about what I just said? Or would you give me an example of what you meant by something? So what are you doing is um, maybe they say, like I said, you know, often when counselees come, they speak very vague. Not all of them speak to the point. They speak very vague and they may say things um, like, uh, you know, the challenges I face with people are many. All right. So they've given you a statement like that. And here you're wondering, what could the challenges be? What could the many be? Who are the people that's involved? Okay. Now that's what questioning helps uh, and how questioning helps that you pick up things that they may be saying they may have clarity in their mind. They could have some clarity in their mind or they're referencing something as they're talking about, about it. But for you as a counselor really requires a little bit more of fleshing out. And that's what questions do. So it, it assists to pinpoint a specific issue, to clarify a certain information, as well as um, uh, it, it helps it helps to bring down the ambiguity that a counselor may experience. Okay. Now it also, of course, like, like we know, like, like we had spoken about is that it aids in exploration and that's where it comes in your initial part of part of your um, uh, sessions of air of self exploration. So here are some examples. What further thoughts do you have about this person? Your parents want you to marry. Okay. So it's um, maybe you've, She's or she or he has given you certain understanding or certain pointers about, in this case, about the person, but then you are exploring a bit more. Or uh, the next one, you mentioned that your father always made you feel important. What did you mean? Okay. Now, these are statements that they make, but when you flesh it out a little bit more, it adds to the richness of the of the story that they, they're saying, or what are you feeling as we are talking about this? Okay, now this is a very, very powerful question because uh, even like, so usually some of these questions are asked when, um, you know, maybe as a counselor, you're bringing about a perspective change. Okay, um, so let me give you an example. Um, I'll give you an example of one of my cases that that I that I saw yesterday. So this client, this uh, counselee was saying that when he gets the messages from his wife, uh, and right now they're separated. Okay, so when he gets the messages from his wife um, about uh, uh, about a statement that suggests that she and the children um, are are doing something it kind of triggers him uh, not doing something she and the children are grateful for what he is doing uh, he supports them in some way so so then she sent a message saying the children and i are very grateful for what you're doing now that sentence triggered triggered a sense of anger so um so then you know the fact is all that he would say is you know I've, it triggered me now I'm I'm trying to understand, or I want to understand, what about that statement seems like a trigger, because maybe as you and I may look at it, you're saying, okay, that's so nice. She's actually being very grateful for all that he's doing, but but it has brought about another sense of a feeling. So when when it when I ask this question, what are you feeling as you're telling me this information? He says, I feel left out. I feel. I, I feel that they treat me as somebody else, as if, as if um, uh, what I'm doing is an obligation. Of course, I will take care of my children. So you know that's what he said. But this kind of a question really helps to understand 
where he's at. So when we changed, when we looked at it a different perspective, you know, then it began. To, so so while we were talking, I, I gave him a different perspective. I said, okay, um, could you would is it something that you could just look at as you know they're just plain words, they're plain words or a plain sense of gratitude, and it doesn't have any agenda or any intent behind it. So then. Then when I ask, what are you feeling as we're talking about this? Is, I, you know, I feel much better. At least I know that I'm being acknowledged. So you see how, how that changes when you ask important questions like this that really helps them to change their perspective and change the way that they look at a certain situation. So this is, um, uh, it aids in self-exploration. It encourages, what does questioning do? It encourages the counselee to talk. It is it is an invitation, okay? So the the common questions, I mean, the, co the uh, common example that we would find here is, um, sorry, yeah, you said something about your sister a little while ago. Are you interested in tell, telling me about her now? So some kind of information that has been brought up, you're encouraging them to talk, talk, a little more okay or it helps to open up new areas of dis discussion so it's uh, again here is an example you are very disappointed at the way you are treated at office how do you feel at home okay so here it's opening up something new it's uh, you're tending to understand whether the concern happens in different spaces or different areas of the of the counselee's life okay now the, uh, even as we look at questions let's look at that there are two frames of question that can be productive questions or they can be unproductive questions so the these productive questions is something that um uh, is a positive form of questioning and these questions create interactions that you know have significant payoffs for both the counselee as well as the counselor but in turn unproductive questions which i will take you all through after this uh, brings forth information it may give you information but does not yield good responses okay you may not get too much from the counselee if they're unproductive like like we saw in in john's case right it it wasn't productive at all and uh, there was nothing that there was as a focus as to what what the 19 year old was going through so it was it was a very unproductive form of questioning so looking at productive question questions let's the first thing productive questions should energize thoughts okay what makes you think so or what is happening in your mind right now? Or how do you explain his behavior? You're encouraging them to think, not just give information, but encouraging them to process and understand what a behavior means, what a certain response means, or what a certain action means. And that really energizes their thoughts that you are getting them to think. OK, the next thing it does is productive questions should bring about a place where you can express feelings. Now, this is absolutely important going back to the previous skill of responding. OK, so what makes you feel this way or what is happening between you and your husband right now? So you're coming, bringing them to a place of actually getting them in tune with their feelings, OK? Or even things of what uh, what are you feeling right now? Now, that helps in expressing those feelings, OK? Often, it uh, uh, productive questioning, what it can do is it helps to link certain, uh, link certain comments that the um, counselee may be uh, the counselee may be making okay like this example it says the client the counselee says my mother constantly calls me dumb I guess maybe I don't work hard enough but the work is too hard for me okay and what's the counselor saying here it's saying I hear something in what you're saying I wonder if you seem to agree with your mother okay so uh, the the client has the counselee has only given a comment about what they think about the mother but it says you know there is some kind of a link that the uh, counselee makes with regard to what she thinks about herself and what the counsellor is trying to activate here is is it something that you are also agreeing with what your mother says and and that's again helpful to understand 
the frame of reference of the uh, counseling. So that's that's one of um, linking comments. The next one is to redirect. Redirect is to move course. Okay, like the example given here, is it possible you focus on your son more to avoid what is happening between you and your husband? Okay, so here is uh, the, the counselor is actually checking to see if there is, uh, you know, if there is an avoidance about what's happening in the marriage and the focus has been all on the sun. So it's a redirect question to help uh, the, the counselee to understand what kind of a process that they may be in. Okay, so those are some set of un productive questions. Let's look at unproductive questions. Unproductive questions is very much what, what we did in the role play. Role play. It's picking at the counselor, you know, asking things like, what's the matter with you? Why do you always ever say that? Why don't you ever listen to what I say? Um, I think some of the things that I said, why don't you fit in? You know, or uh, uh, I think another thing that I I, I had said is, uh, why don't you get along with others, right? So this is just picking at uh, the the counselee, and that's not that's that that can be very disrespectful, okay? Or the wool gatherers. Wool gatherers are the examples that I took is how many people in your class, how many girls, how many boys, you know, what are they wearing, or when do they come to school, or what time does your college start? When does it end? I mean, all of them are irrelevant. Okay. Or even this, the second question, do you think that the session is supportive for you? Okay. These are all ways to just fluff up something which aren't helpful at all. Okay. So let's just uh, focus on what are some characteristics of good questioning when we, when we're looking at um, building the skill, what should we, should we uh, understand now? Uh, Often in counseling, and I think you know when when we were um, amateurs at it, it seems that a counseling session always consists of just questions. Okay, and we were always taught that the uh, the counselor who relies too much on questions is an error. Okay, and that uh, it, it's only a uh, one among the very many tools that you have in your toolbox or you know in your skill box in your skill set okay so what are the characteristics of good counseling so let's look at it one by one and uh, figure this out okay so the first one is it should be used as instruments to open channels of communication not to only interrogate okay so it is not just information gathering but it's helping the counselee um, express things using different channels which means they may be using it by words there is a uh, there is a sense of a body body language that comes about there are gestures there is silence there is crying there is emotional outbursts all of that and that's again opening up a channel of communication so when when you ask a good question you know it should uh, I'm sorry, a good question should be able to erupt the person to think. Okay, so that's uh, and, and that I think comes only through through practice. Okay, even even uh, so going back to your counseling sessions and looking at how could I have better asked this question? You know, what what else could I have said to really help the counselee come to a place of improving what they're thinking about? Okay. So it's it's to help. It's not just a, a place of an interview, not like an interview that you'd go in an office, but this has a lot more a deeper sense of a meaning. Like, for example, let's say in John's case, um, you know, after we get to a point of understanding that she is she is lonely or he is lonely in college, um, maybe a question like, uh, what what does this what does uh, um, you know the fact that uh, others don't communicate to you mean to you or what does it feel like to you to be isolated so this actually helps for the for the counselee to come back a lot more in tune with what they're feeling with what how they perceive a situation okay it really helps to bring about that 
The next one is interspersing active listening with questions is important. So uh, active listening goes back to the skill of responding. So having a good balance of responding to feeling, responding to meaning, responding to content, having a summative reflection, all that we learned last time is very important with questions. Otherwise, it's going to be it's going to be a QA. Okay. It's going to be like how you sit in a courtroom or you sit in a police station and having questions thrown at you. Okay. And too many questions are bad. Too many questions can make the counselee feel extremely defensive, extremely um, cornered. Okay. So interspersing this is very, very important. So we work, we work. In, in counseling, we were given a rule, okay? Uh, especially in a, in, a, in a shorter sense of a conversation, uh, you know, when, when I mean that the, when the counselee is not very articulate about, um, about, about the story, our, you know, we were given this formula, two to three questions, then comes a response. Okay, two to three questions, then a response. So we've had to, you know, very consciously keep that in mind before, uh, you know, you move on to, to significant questions on that. Okay. Now, questions must follow on from a previous response and must encourage them to build upon their last response. So, for example, in John's case, um, going back to the question that I asked, I, I'd say, you know, what does this mean to you to feel left out in class? So... Uh, maybe John would say, I just think I've lost myself or I just feel um, very alone. I feel miserable. I feel horrible. I feel I'm good for nothing. Okay, so these may be certain, certain uh, responses. And your next question should encourage that, okay? So maybe that next question is, uh, um, how do you feel in other places? Um, or let's say, how do you feel in ch at church? How, how do you feel at home? So that gives you your next, you've also understood that at home, at church, which, which he mentioned, at church, at home, he's perfectly okay. You know, he has friends, he has people. So you know that this has something to do within the, the class or the college in itself, that something is going on there and this is not something that is universal. So that really helps. So you, you encourage uh, the next question depending on the previous respond, okay? response. Uh, at the end of questioning, to clarify a problem situation, always clarify by summarizing. So when you've questioned uh, you know, a lot, you're, they're telling you, let's say, an event. And at the end of it, you clarify a problem situation and you clarify it by summarizing. So you may say, oh, okay, um, John, what I heard you say is, um, um, you know, that, that you feel terrible going to college. Um, you feel concerned that, um, that you don't seem to, uh, to have friends there. And that's, that's a huge problem for you. Okay. So you're, you're, you're kind of getting that. And what I do see is that you would like to figure this out right and you're looking for ways to uh, feel better in your in your setting of college so you've kind of clarified the problem okay and you've clarified it by summarizing so that's what your your initial set of questioning should help in in that area okay my screen is frozen it's the minute okay all right okay so let me just give you an example, just to just for us to um, uh, understand how sometimes um, this this is about Mary itself. Okay, the flow of questions with with Mary. So here, Mary. Um, now this is a, a a good way of of bringing about questions. Okay, so Mary says here, I'm very concerned that I'm not getting on well with my classmates. Okay. So the counsel, counselor says, you're very worried about these relationships in class. Can you tell me more? Uh, so Mary says, yes, there are six of us, sorry, and the others seem to be friends. 
So the counselor here says, the others get on well, but how do they behave with you? Uh, and Mary says, they're not openly nasty, but they do not go out of their way to speak to me. Okay. Um, so, uh, so here the counselor again says, so you don't feel included rather than they dislike you. Have I got you right? So here the counselor is making some meaning and says, it's more than not feeling, not being disliked. It's about them not dis including her. Okay. So Mary says, yes. And how do you behave towards them? So Mary says, I tend to keep to myself rather than try to talk with them. I seem to be afraid of them. So here the counselor is summarizing it and says, you feel lonely because you keep more to yourself and would like to overcome your fear of them. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, uh, so this is one way that, that it can go. Okay. It can go in very, very many different ways, but, but this is one form of how it can be. Uh, it can be shared. Okay. Now to learn from this, to understand that when you're looking at questions, be cautious to not over question. Okay. And why? It's because it uh, brings about a message to the counselor that they are in control. And it also gives an understanding to the counselee that the counselor has every answer or, or knows all about the situation and can bring about uh, answers to every problem. Okay. And here we said questions in quick succession can often make the counselee feel extremely interrogated. Okay. So be, being cautious about this, because when in, when in determining these effective questioning techniques, it's what is important is also important to consider the nature of or the personality of your counselee and your ongoing relationship with the council, with you as a counselor, and what is the issues issues at hand? When they're meeting you for the first time, if you're going to get into an interrogative mode, it definitely appears that you have all the answers. But as you build, let's say, uh, you have gone to a place where uh, in your counseling sessions, your uh, exploration is much deeper than what is being presented. It's not the issue at hand, but maybe it's a lot more about, you know, you're, you're going down to the needs. Uh, what kind of need seems to be unmet that this is manifesting its way? When you go down there, sometimes it's okay to bring about uh, questions a little bit more often because you're helping them to think, okay? And, and you're, you're giving them an opportunity through your questioning, you're giving them an opportunity to explore further into what they may be experiencing and what they may be feeling, okay? Uh, okay, let me stop here. Are there any questions? Any questions up until now? Yes, Shay, go ahead. Well, mine is just a comment. I, I just wanted to add that I think the tone, the tone used to ask the questions go a long way. The questions may be right, but even the tone to which you ask the question could put off the counselee. So I just observed that when yeah. you were going through yeah. the examples. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. So like we said, there could be great questions. Like, for example, the first question I asked John, you know, why are you here today? It's not a bad question, right? The way that it was put, the you know, it was it was a very direct, and there wasn't any um, uh, any initial uh, attending that was done, right? Like, uh, hi John, good to meet with you. Um, you know, I'm glad that you've come. You know, uh, um, I'd like to know why you're here today. That's perfect. That's actually a good question. But like Shay said, the tone or the the pitch with which it is said, the force with which it is said, uh, can make all the difference. Okay. Uh, any other questions? We're going to be doing some role play, so um, let's gear up for that also. Remember, it's the time to ask questions. My students love this hour because you can ask questions. Okay. What should be done when questions get only responses as monosyllables? The counselee is not responsive. Okay, so often you would see that monosyllable answers come with close-ended questions. Are you feeling sad? Um, you know, uh, are you uh, are you upset? Did you have a fight with somebody? 
So that's where you get your yes and no questions, and especially for a counselee who's not very responsive. It can be very hard. So to to ensure that you use a lot more, which we're going to be looking at our our next uh, uh, session, uh, next class, next hour, is open-ended and closed-ended questions. So it's better always to bring about more open-ended question unless of course you want to clarify something very very specific you know it's it's a very specific question like uh, you know do you also have a sister in your family it's just to really understand if there is a sister in the family like like suppose if you you've asked about you know uh, would you tell me about the members of your family you know that's that would be a definitely a better question but let's say she's gone through it and she's missed out one one person and you know says do you also have a sister in the family and so that that's helpful so always trying to change your kind of questions from uh, closed to open ended questions is always helpful okay uh, any other thoughts yes christopher Yes, I, I was just thinking that um, uh, you know this could apply to both. Uh, it could apply to both open-ended uh, questions also. Uh, you know where the counselee is, um, you know, doesn't want to really, um, uh, you know, you know, really uh, respond to questions, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's it's really uh, you know, maybe the maybe the counselee is 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 quite upset or uh, or doesn't want to really cooperate. And um, the other thing I think is that you know sometimes when you ask the question, uh, maybe in a in a, in a counselor counselee environment uh, relation I mean uh, environment, but also just you know generally when you know when you when you want to help someone, um, sometimes a question that one asks is also is uh, res uh, you know uh, uh, the, the person responds back with a with a question, not not an answer. So how would how would that how sort do of yeah, how okay. Do you manage yeah. That? <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, I'll I'll take up your first question. When they even when they are open ended questions, often you will have clients saying, "I don't know, I don't know, I'm not sure," right? So that's when, or let's say they don't say anything. That's when you pick up on what you're seeing. You respond. You respond to the. To different cues that you're seeing, okay. Like for example, uh, what I see is you seem quite unsure about that that question. Would you like to explore that a little bit more? So what you're doing here is that um, maybe here. So here, here you're, you're making some assumptions that one, uh, they haven't even thought about it. Secondly, they have, but they don't want to talk about it. Okay, uh, so so through that this question, you know, I I sense that um, you know you don't have clarity on that, and that's fine. Would you like to explore that more? Is going to give you either a yes or a no, a direct question. Okay, so they may say no. So so you may respond like, uh, oh, I see that may be uncomfortable. We could probably pick this up maybe a little later, and then you could go back to. What else do you think is significant that we should be discussing here? So you have bought back the the um, ball back into their court, where they where they're going to pick up the next thing that they want to want to share. Okay, so um, I'm I'm fine with with the fact that you don't want to talk about this. What else do you think is significant that we need to discuss here? Okay, so in that way, you've bought it back to the counselee to. Uh, uh, to pick up, okay. So that's the first one. The second, uh, what was your second question, Christopher? You know, when, sorry, they, yeah. when they respond, uh, you know, you respond to your question by asking you a question. Asking your question, okay. All right. So often, this is what you will get. You will get something like, you know, uh, they're trying to get a validation from you, right? Uh, they say, um, "Ma'am, do you?" What do you think? Do you think that was right to do? They're going to get to ask you that, okay? And we've been taught in counseling, do not validate their either it is right or it is wrong. Do not validate it is right or it is wrong. So some way of responding to that is, uh, one way of saying is, um, 
you know, I'm, I, I'd like to understand that from you. What do you think about it? So generally respond to a question. You res respond to a question back with a question. Okay, especially when they're asking you details of your own understanding or of your own thoughts, you generally respond back to them or saying something like, um, you know, I'm, I'm keen to understand it from your point of view. Okay. Uh, uh, now, sometimes they may, they may continue pressing on, like, for example, even if it becomes very personal ended questions. Okay. So that's where you, you can deal with the questions very politely and maybe give needed answers like probably they may say ask you more personal questions of you know uh, what uh, some something that's that's extremely personal that you don't you don't need to divulge you could say um you know probably this information may not be relevant for our discussion i'd like to go back to what we're talking you can change course okay and that's perfectly okay to do where you are you're not um uh, you're not disrespecting that question, or or you could say something like, you know, maybe we could discuss that uh, probably later. But we are at our point of time. We are focusing about this one thing. So, would shall we look back into this? So, you, you know, you can do that in an extremely respectful way. But if there's a question that's asked to you, respond back with a question and say, what do you think about it? Or I'm I'm interested and keen to understand what your stand on this is, and I'd like to hear that. Okay. So you're, def you're refocusing them back to their own space and their own thoughts on it. OK? All right. Yeah. Uh, Beth, you said, if they ask your opinion, can you lead them to what? Sorry, the Bible. Um, the Bible says about it instead of giving your opinion. So often what you can do, and that's something we um, what, what we, we try and do this carefully is because we would want it being generated by them. So like we, they may ask, okay, what is your opinion about it? I may ask them, I'd like to understand what you feel about it and what you think scripture says about it. What have you seen as what scripture says about it? So you're also getting some kind of an idea or the next thing to say is, you know, can we do this as a task for next week? That you do a little bit of a search to understand what it means, or what um, what it is, uh, uh, what it means in 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 scripture, because what you want to do is not spoon feed them. Okay, what you want them to do is to come up with a place where they are uh, exploring things for themselves. Okay, because if it comes, uh, so. Is it a bad idea to, to tell them about what the Bible says? No, definitely not. It isn't. But you're getting their buy-in. You want them to be involved in their process of healing. Okay, so getting them to say, okay. And maybe the next time that you meet with them, say, you know, this is what where we left off with. Um, were you able to figure that out? So, so that's something you keep in mind and, and bring that back. Because you shouldn't be the one who should be giving them the answers. You are facilitating a time where they are able to find their own answers. So I, what I always do is I say, you know, have you thought about what scripture says about it? Have you looked into what scripture says about it? And maybe they may say something. And probably what we can do, which, which we sometimes do, is maybe give them a verse and says, this is what scripture specifies about it. What meaning does it make for you? That's something you can do. You know, uh, this is what is said in scripture about this situation, what does this mean for you? What do you think is speaking to you? Okay, so there again, they, it's the onus on them to find out and make meaning on that. Okay, all right. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, stop for a 10 minute break. It's 10.54 on my clock. We will be back at 11.04. You can grab your coffees and come back. <laughs> 